is going to be map two. Cash, one nothing already. Dignitas on dust two, the first map. Wasn't as convincing as we thought it might be at half. It was 11-4 at half. It ended up being 16-10. Yeah, a nice little comeback. Potentially could have been a bit stronger, but the last round, uh, Dignitas shut it down pretty convincingly. But going into cash, though, that was obviously Dignitas's pick. Mm -hmm. So maybe that was, uh, like I said, it seemed like going into that, D Dilby and Gaming had to warm up a little bit and they started showing up towards you know, the latter half of the game. Going into their map, potentially they could start up and start firing all cylinders, but they go in on the T side this time. So they were stronger on the T side on the second, on the first map, but whether they can transfer that over to this after a loss, I'm not so sure. The last time I cast a Dignitas on cash was against Hellraisers. And they actually beat them on cash pretty convincingly, and they lost to the subsequent maps after that. So I know they've got a pretty decent cash here. They do. They have a nice play style. They, they keep it dynamic. They move, keep things refreshing almost every single time. But um, this is another one I do favor for Dignitas. I don't see DNG doing anything mm -hmm. too crazy here. Um, I, in terms of the analysis from DNG, I haven't watched much of them, so I can't really tell you exactly what they do. Polish, Polish teams do seem to play this while. map a lot. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen them on this map as well, to be fair. But they will be starting on the T side. Obviously, they got the pistol in the second half. So let's see what they can can do here. Whether they can just transfer the Glock pushes, get into that bomb site fast. A lot of teams opting just to rush B at the moment. It's 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 it, it's a difficult call, right? So a lot of teams do rush B all the time in the pistol round. But the the current meta is again. It's just like it's very similar to us too. The CTs will uh, push into the B oh, storage. They've kind of swayed it. again. They've swayed again. Twitch, well, it was like 53% in favor of DNG. 57%, I believe, in favor of DNG. It's gone back the way of Tignathas. Oh, so it just takes one map every time, doesn't it? And then it kind of swings right back in. They call it the fickle nature of the crowd. Well, the, Brut the Brutus effect. The last speaker gets to sway the, the audience. Well, I think those are actually very correct. I think I like those. I think I, yeah. That's actually more consistent with the actual betting the odds fact that we've seen. These guys today. are starting CT as well. They, if they get the pistol, I think they'll, they'll easily get 12 or 13 on this half. It's just closing out the game. Obviously, Dignitas looks like they may have been... They got out of it just in time, but it looked like at one point they may have been struggling when they lost five rounds in a row on their CT Dust 2. We know they struggled to close games out. Maybe that was uh, some glimmers of that, but they got out of it in the end. It wasn't too... Yeah, crazy. that's definitely been an on a recurring theme within Danish teams for some odd reason. Obviously, TSM has solved those issues, hence their success as of late, although... Well, you say that. I, as of late, excluding the last month. Can I, yeah. can I do that? Is that a thing I can do? I think the last month is fair. After, they, after uh, Ace of Predator Masters, they came last place. Um, obviously, Pro League, they get knocked down in a best-of-one format that just wasn't really favorable. Yeah, obviously, but um, still, I know best-of-one isn't favorable, but if you're wanting to be one of the world's best teams, if you can't, you gotta win them. If you can't comp compete in best-of-one tournaments, you, there's only so far that that can go. I don't really know. It's a difficult one to... Analyze. I know it's an, uh, an unpopular opinion to say. Obviously, best of one isn't ideal. And no, never. never. Is. I, I don't That's think. And a tournament that had that much prize money on the line, and that you already you played twenty best of ones in the season to get to that tournament. Yeah. Let's play more best of ones. That's a great idea. But yeah, I guess the idea. I'm is gonna get myself in trouble. You knew you knew it was a best of one coming in. Is what I'm saying. It wasn't like it was a surprise. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. That's true. 100. percent And um, there was there was a good number of upsets in that tournament. Obviously, with Keith Stars winning a game, CLG winning a game. I mean, Cloud9, that was the start of them rising back up to prominence. But anyway, that's a whole other kettle of fish. The kettle of fish. What was that accent? I don't know, mate. Okay. It's happening again. The Australian-British hybrid. That's what it is, mate. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Really Whoa, we just had like a rainbow. Can we do that every time? Stats rainbow. Again, there will be no knifing for sides on this map as well because it is... DNG's pick. Exactly. So, I think that's going to be a favored side. I think the stats, I think they rated about 54% in favor of the CT. Again, I think the hey, top hey, team, yeah. so he's definitely the favorite yeah. side. And did you see the thing on Reddit where you can actually just Google it and Google has an integrated stat yeah. system for CS now? I don't, think, that, I don't think that's a Google uh, thing. Well, it just, oh, right. It, it just reads from another website. Exactly, but, it, yeah, exactly, but it, Google has it. So yeah, it's not like Google. It's like... Yeah, Google didn't. Yeah, no, okay, CSK all right. Stats. The way I phrased it, you're right. That came out to make it sound like Google did it themselves. Either way, the thing that people <laughs> have to include is that it's matchmaking that's uh, likely accumulated from that, which isn't necessarily representative of... Yeah, that's what I mean. So in top-level CS, at least, at most, I think, 95% of the time, teams will pick CT first. Just to, unless they've got some sort of sick T side and they want to be running that and set 
a huge target for the other team. I think they're always going to pick the CT side. But statistically, it's not that too far gone. But we should be getting ready to go live any second if you've just joined us. This is the second map in the grand final of the group qualifiers. Group number two. Group number two. Excuse me. It's a mouthful. So they'll be going up against Titan, Envious, and Fnatic. Fnatic. So even if you get win this part of the tournament, you've got a much bigger mountain to climb going into the next stage of the brackets and stuff. So here we go then finally getting into it. Second map. I think it has won the first one. And uh, this is a best of five, of course. So one more required after this. First team to three maps. But uh, looks like the terrorists will be opting for three sets of armor, two tech nines, one raid boss, and uh, a smoke grenade. I talked about the, the rush B being so prevalent on this map, and it looks like that they'll be doing exactly that. CT's not showing any aggression, and they're allowing it to come in. Nico going to throw out a nade that's perfectly timed, though. Oh, look at the damage it does, but it's Pimpu actually finding three. the kills. It's three, in fact, with the USP. His spot now gets occupied by Innocent, but... The same fate is met from Nico's USB that time, and he's picking up two in return. It always seems like there's one individual player that just wants to be stubborn for DNG. It's always been easy as well. He did it on well, Cobble. Well, it was me too in the first map tonight, I would say, in that. Certain I, I just remember on Cobble on their T side. They would send four players towards That's B and Minis, and would just be sitting in the middle area. And he would flank. Yeah, and like the, the, all his teammates would be dead before he did anything. But he still has a chance here. Two on one situation. Bomb is down after Pim getting those three stellar headshots as the rush B came in. I and mean, he's still just covering off every possible angle because if he can find them isolated more specifically, he's got a real chance at this. Again, they'll bomb down over toward the connector. They can spot that out. Both CTs know it's there. So they just have to sit and wait. Maniz has to play this. At some point in time, he will make himself known. And he's heard MSL going for that jumping peak. But now, by the fact that the flash came out, even though he was able to dodge it, he's given away his position on noise alone. So MSL and Nico together push out to close him off. So the whole idea of the rush B is you need to have the players jumping on the corner. So let's see how they approach this as they come into the bomb site. My advice would be you have to, this first guy has to jump. He has to make the CT miss that first headshot. The fact if you just run straight in like that, he doesn't have to move his crosshair at all and he's already ready to kill the next person, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So if you the first player jumps, at least the CT has to reset his aim if he, if he gets you in the first kill. So it's all about that first kill for the CT. So without jumping, you allow them to keep the cross at the same height and they can kind of gather up kills like you just did there. But a fourth spy coming in from the T side, obviously going towards the A side. We know how strong this can be. One smoke out of the squeaky door, a flashbang coming in from A main, and they should be able to execute onto the site. Pretty convincing then. It's a round that can be very dangerous. They yeah, are rotating Nico and Pimp back over now, but it might be a little bit late in the fact that AZ's gone. So they'll get a bomb plant out of this, the T's. Should win this as well. Kierby's still been in this corner the whole time, but hasn't found the opportune moment to make his presence known. And when he does, it is successful in the degree that he gets one kill. Now it's a double. Spiro goes down. And I think got one before that, but he's also now gonna be the last one left as Maniz, once again, late to join the party. And this time ineffective in doing so. Arrives wow. from me, man, and there's the last shot. There's the defuse. You assumed after the first two entry kills that round's pretty tied up for the, uh, the terrorist team, but Apparently, the retake comes in, and uh, KRB picks up three big kills there, and uh, keeps the economy pretty honest for the CTs. They pick up two rifles. The Ts, of course, are, after getting that bomb down, can force some AKs. Uh, it won't be the best of buys. I'm not really sure I'm a fan of this, because they haven't got head armor. And the fact that the CTs may have some SMGs and a famous left, they are leaving themselves a little bit exposed here, and they haven't got any smokes or anything to play with. This is a really questionable buy, Matt. Well, they're going to go for the boost. Oh, that nade. It actually didn't do as much as I thought when I look at the damage, but on the graphic, it appeared to pretty much target itself into someone's chest. Pimp's going to go get information for Dignitas. So this is good. They'll cordon off B. MSL's with him for potential trade if it comes to that. And now it's four men. They are coming back that direction. Pimp might get spotted. Needs to be aware that he's got a problem in the fact that Innocent... Was just coming back from T-Spawn. He rotated the long way. But the bomb has been dropped. They've got this figured out. And MSL can go security. Puts a, sm a smoke out in front of him on the connector. But meanwhile, the two other players on the terrace have gone back through vents. And AZ's heard them drop in. So he's just going to wait for them to cross. And MSL, he'll get that call from AZ. That at least one has come that direction. So again, they can play this passively. There's no reason for them to even be timid at this point about what's going on. Well. Spiro's managed to actually get back out toward middle and in through the rear connector, so it's going to catch AZ off guard. 
But again, it's just one member of two that still remain and now have that information plus the bomb, which Spiro is going to perhaps prematurely think that he can grab and as a result pays the price of his life. So I'd prefer them to get Galil's in that situation. Galil had armor, and smokes and flashbangs as well. That would have been a lot more effective, I think, anyway. Getting AK's no head armor against the CT side, it just means you can just get insta shot and dinked. I think this would probably be an example of that. Look at that instant kill. Like, that's that's the problem when you don't have head armor. And especially if you don't have smokes and flashbangs on cash, you're going to have a very difficult time actually getting into any bomb side. There's so many choke points you need to be wary of and so many angles the CT to hide from. I think that was a really difficult call, but the terrorist team... Rushing B now, and uh, this will be four in a row for them. They haven't really done anything too for them yet. And Dignitas again, this time in fact, even more efficient than all of the others, able to close out the anti-eco with four members still alive. MSL, interestingly enough, not a whole lot of money, so they've got to throw him over the M4, but in doing so, that allows them to bring up the op on Nico, which will go directly head-to-head -head with Spiro's op. Now bot as well on... Where's, he gonna, side. where's Nico going to take you there? Will he go towards the B area and just do that anchor or we see quite a lot? I think he probably you is. You are correct. It's going to be the B just drop. Just him as well. It's a really good idea because they have really strong A presence he's, for the he's, execution. He's got Maniz coming to it. He spotted him. 100% saw that. So Look at this push open Dignitas. It's so great. It's such an amazing round to do it on. As you know, the terrorists will be trying to think what they can do and all the kills coming in. They're finding everything. This is such a stellar round from Dignitas as they take down the first three frags and isolate the T so badly. What can they even do now? They have one player out in middle to the innocent, but the round is too far gone to salvage now. And this is amazing stuff from Dig. MSL just seems to be a magnet for that bomb. Does he not as Pimp Down kind finds innocent? Spiro, last one left with the op. Knows that Nico was over here, so he's gone good Nico hunting. Try to find that shot, stabilize at least that op battle potential to punish them further if they went to run for it. That's his wishful thinking, but none of that's going to happen. None of that's materializing. So to break that round down a little bit, so they sent Nico towards the, uh, the B area by himself. Pretty stable position. We've got the AWP. He can get one kill or one shot and fall back pretty easily. And the other guys pushed in to the A-bomb side, swarms the, the terrorist side, and that's pretty much the perfect call because you know they're going to try and do an execute onto A. Once they've lost four in a row, they're going to be going back to the drawing board. The mid-picks didn't work for them. They're going to try and maybe do an execution onto the bomb site, and that's what they tried to do. Got caught out completely. They weren't expecting that push from Dignitas, and it was the, a really impressive call and something uh, I like a lot as a captain. Yeah, it's... Sorry? Something I like... It's kind of stuff I would like to call when I was a captain as well. It's like trying to catch the teasers they're adapting mm -hmm. and you push into them and surprise them as they're doing their little set pieces and stuff. I, I, cut, I thought you were going to further something there when I cut you off. My mistake. No, no, no. That was it. That was all the point I wanted to make. But here we go. Fifth... Well, actually sixth round, sorry. And the, the tees... After losing so many, the loss bonus works in their favor. They can justify tech downs and armor. And it looks like all five players and will be heading towards A again. Just change of pace as well for Nico. And last time we saw him find that opening pick, this time he's going to have more than one to shoot at, but he's going to have a very close angle to cover, and now smokes and flashes in front of him. When he looks back, he realizes that, that somehow the size of which the NMP appeared has multiplied, and he's a lot closer than initially he was. It's Michu now to find Kirby, and this is looking all right with suddenly two entry kills going the way of DNG, but let's not call it done just yet. They're still looking for this retake, and the fact that Easy and Pimp, no Miniz is off of the site, means they'll have more confidence to take the fight against two. And they've just peaked mid, which knows they've got some time to work with before he'll re-peak onto them, which means MSL can get lured. It all adds up one thing to another, and AZ's gonna go ahead and find another kill. They try and stick this defuse, and they get it. Miniz made that interesting by getting AZ, but it's still Pimp. I respond. thought that was the defuser he got then. That would have been really crazy had he done that, but... CTs... Double up. Keep the momentum rolling. They actually had a double up last round as well. That's the problem. When you have... The AWP at the quad area. He has to hit the first shot or he gets completely shut down. That's what happened to Nico. Didn't manage to take one down with him. But going against the rifles now, there's no reason why he can't get back there. I guess he can change it up a little bit. We can see Pimp's actually going to be taking the AWP towards uh, the B-bomb site. Nico's going to be towards middle. So this is good. Every single round they change their setup, which is the best way to play cash in my opinion. Smichu just checks out what's going on in A-Main. They'll boost Spiro up now as well. Nice hyper beast. And to hyper extend potentially onto a CT and does it's AZ. Who after his initial flash decides, eh, let's go see what's going on. Well, AZ, not too much, not too much at all, but as many is now out toward the Sunder. Smoke's gonna cover that. So even though they go for the Molotov play, this is interesting. That's actually really smart from Dignitas to put that 
smoke grenade out. Because that Molotov play, again, we talked about that last night, designed so that the player in Sunroom can catch the player falling out of the vents in transition, but the smoke prohibited that. As I say everything, though, it all comes back around to Nico's final kill. So far, at least, and it is his final kill, as Innocent shuts him up until next round, but they continue to go back and forth, trading blows. Pimp with the op means that he's got to hold this a site. That's where both T players are, and only one Dignitas player. The other rotating over toward Truck. It's MSL. And knowing that bomb is being planted, can he stop it? He cannot. He does a massive amount of damage, but that's not going to be sufficient. He still has to find the kill, and Lord's going to have a smoke to work with. Miniz, oh, almost missing the shot. Does manage to close it, so DNG picking up their first. Yeah, getting that first all pick at the start. Obviously, a lot of the teams will try and work the pick mentality, and they that time very successful. AZ maybe overextending a tiny bit there without the information. So... CTs will be able to bounce back from this. They get one AWP this time. I think it's probably sensible. The double AWP setup doesn't seem to be too effective, especially when the bomb goes down. Pimp trying to hold that bomb side of a Tech 9 and his AWP on his back. But he, though, and obviously in a very flat opposition, if they lose this round, the money's reset. So one, they want to try and convert it to a victory and uh, shut down the CT momentum so far. But pretty standing round for them now. 2-1-2 two, two, just holding up, maybe getting another boost going. But ultimately, it looks like the bomb is going to be down towards B. So maybe they're trying to get some more information, another pick perhaps. But maybe falling back to the beast in the middle. Very aggressive setup in terms of the stance at eight. That boosted player is on top of the red crate. That's Caribbean. AZ's behind. He's the one who put him up there. As they look to try and shut down A main, the play that looks to materialize. Lord working out to squeaky. And Michu and Spiro waiting in the hallway. The flash, it does come through the smoke, but Kirby doesn't use it to push in. He's going to get back in the corner. We've seen him use this play with the SMGs early on. He was isolated the first time, so he didn't actually get the trade kills or the, the reverse entry kills, as you were. When they came into the site, they actually had to wait for the post plant for him to even show himself. This time, he's not even going to get a chance to see anyone at all because they've rocked off of A and back over toward B. And Nico's just firing out some shots, but he's going to anticipate this given that things have gone quiet on the western front. Let's bring it back over to the east. Flash into the tunnels. Lord Michu, Spiro, they all run out. We can see them all. Grouping up and Innocent finding Pim puts a really big amount of pressure on Nico, who found himself in a really awkward position. Nowhere to hide after that initial shot came through. So even though it was successful to begin with, it's all gone back the other way. And Michu and Miniz on the entry were absolutely flawless. Yeah, so after looking, we said the bomb was down towards middle. So that suggested they were just looking for a pick, trying to apply pressure on positions, make CTs use their grenades before anything actually happened. They did that very effectively. The CTs didn't really seem to have to, uh, any clue as to what was going on. And then Innocent holding that mid area as all four other players went into B through a smoke as well. As you said, Nico getting isolated um, with the AWP there. Didn't manage to get pick up more than one, which means his teammates had a big job of retaking at that point. But two in a row now for Terrorist. And it looks like the CT is actually on a force by Not a very good one of that. Two Famous and a CZ in hand. And this is a round you really have to favor them in oh, as you say Nico. that though. Nico takes down Michu. And not even a point of damage to come against him. He does that with just such swift precision. But that time it all changes. All 100 gone from Michu's AK through the edge of the wall. It's only a matter of time. He's a sitting duck in that position. But now AZ's going to take over middle and slow it down. In fact, not just him. He's got Pimp who's pushing back up. So aggression once, aggression twice. Going to re-smoke AZ so that it'll give Pimp more space to work in. Room to breathe. MSL, meanwhile, will take down Maniz. And that's over toward B. And not only has he found that first pick, he's fallen back inside the site. The problem is that... He's very alone, but they have vents to rotate through. Well, the T's are stacked up towards the B storage area. Bomb is in hand. 40 seconds. Looks like XQ here. Molotov onto the failed Molotov, but it looks things as well as they make their way onto the bomb side. But in they go, and it's still MSL that waits. And he finds the one. He, he actually almost seemed anticlimactic. He made it look so easy, yeah. but found Lord on the way through as well. So it's another round for Dignitas. Seven in total not a bad start to the this half or excuse me this map either much like we saw in dust too very valuable round for them to pick up as well see this is the msl finishing it off like he said made it look very easy especially with the famous as well good finish from him takes down the bomb and keeps the economy strong seeing as only one player died that round for them but they get the orb back everyone's got rifles this time so a change of pace perhaps and uh Maniz actually picking up the orb this time and uh takes down az az is being a little bit too Vulnerable, I think, in the mid-area, exposing himself too much for these picks. And that's what the T's to be basing most of their rounds off. And that should have been the response there. He does actually leg Innocent, well, tag him at least, Nico. But he should have got the kill in that situation. It felt like he actually shot him in the chest. But. MSL looking out again for that aggression. Finding 
damage but no kill. Also giving now his position away in that initial flash, but the smoke comes out and Spiro stops on the other side of it. So MSL only had to fire into the position he initially saw on that, and he's rewarded with the frag. But meanwhile, it's back over at A, where Kirby will find one from the fence. That's traded by Lord. Still gives the man advantage, but look at the HP. And that nade's going to do the first. Actually, his bullet landing before it, but regardless, it had... His number with 9 now on Maniz and 14 on Innocent. There's very likely results to follow as both Pimp and MSL are back on top of the A site. Don't disregard, though, this post-plant position from Innocent because he's got an AK. If he peeks this correctly and hits the correct headshot, the ensuing headshot, rather, yep. it could work out. And now it's very probable as Maniz takes down Pimp and he has to hold that defuse. I'm surprised he did, but... It is going to be a picked up round with very, very scarce HP. Yeah, unfortunately you don't always have that information as the CT. You're not aware of how much HP is remaining on the T's. If they had they known, they probably, said, we probably should have stuck on the bomb and made them face us. But they went for the flash and it was very clever from this, the terrorists to play so passively and was wait for the CTs to push. Obviously something they were banking on, it's worked out for them. And that's reset the CT money. You can see they're all going to be on a full eco this time. I've got a couple of guns in terms of P250s, a Desert Eagle, but it seems like they're playing a very standard round and the T should be able to take advantage of this. And they scout out all areas on the map. CTs do push. Mitri takes down AZ. And uh, now the T's can slow down a little bit. They don't need to go overcommit now. They've worked out the ecos there. They've got the man advantage as well. Innocent has blown out both sides of the vent. And given warning to both sides of both mid and B, the players that play those respective positions for the CTs, but a touchdown pass to close it out because the kills came back. Maniz finding Pimp was pretty swift, but the nade looked rather easy. And the interesting thing is now that the money starts to get a little bit more grim for Dignitas just as quickly as that with two rounds. Let's have a look at their scoreboard here. We can see MSL actually leading the charge for Dig. 13 kills for him. Top player on the T side is actually going to be Maniz as well on 10 kills. So it looks like Dobry Gaming actually getting back into this quite nicely. Is this going to be a double eco for Dignitas now? And uh, a very fast positional control from the T side. Last time the CTs pushed in and gave away a frag. I don't think they'll be doing that this time, but you can see... I thought someone was going to go for a spam there, but CTs just playing four men on the A-bomb side, trying to wait and see if they can find anything from the Ts, but they're playing very passively and not giving anything away. Smoke on connector. That's for Innocent to continue working forward, but he's been flashed as they try and retake his spot, and successfully they pick up a rifle to go with it. So MSL, he's not the one with armory, so, so interesting to see if they throw that back to AZ. But first they have to group up and get near AZ because he's that truck. MSL will take the AK onto A and work successfully with it now taking down Mihu. It's a good start. It's not done just yet though. It ha has to be a little bit more. It's not done at all in fact because Spiro now finding that kill with the P250 means that they can look to try and get back inside A. Miniz has also found Pimp but we spoke of AZ a moment ago and he reminds us of why. This is your bomb carrier as well, so Lord is looking to try and make this play on B solo, and AZ reads it perfectly. Knowing that he's given up the position for that long, has to wide peek it, spots the player and the kill. Bomb now down in the middle of the site, and Spiro lob that knee toward heaven. This is looking like a very, very good round from what started for not much at all from Dignitas. Yeah, so for me, that was very sloppy from the T side. Getting themselves in position where losing frags without any sort of return, is just a big sign that you're approaching the anti-eco completely wrong. You should be, if you're going to play it passively, do a 2-1-2, two, two, two players in each key area, and you have one playing extremely passively towards t spawn is holding that mid-warehouse. Um, CT shouldn't be able to push and get a frag and fall back. That is fundamentally shouldn't be happening. But there we go. CTs do pick up their eighth round on the board, and there was another eco from them. So a very valuable round for them to take. And the Ts don't have an AWP this time. They're going to be on five rifles, but the same thing again, just working the map. Look at that, spread out, completely covering every single point. Suggests that it's kind of waiting for the CTs to push again and uh, seeing if there's any entrance points onto the map. Gathering intel at this stage. They have got enough for an execution for five smokes, in fact, and a Molotov. So just trying to work out whether they can get any damage off or work out whether a stack is from the CTs. And then you would imagine they're going to go into a full set piece in this scenario. Backing up, letting that nade deploy immediately on top of drop. Push anyone back, do damage if possible. Bombs over toward long. They're going to re-grab that now, but obviously we're looking for picks in the process. Pimps pushed up counter boost, and now they're going to go, so they better hope they check this corner. Interestingly, there's no support smoke out from Nico 
to give Pimp an exit plan. So if he's spotted, even if he finds one kill, it's going to be a very likely trade against him. Meanwhile, though, Nico's already spotted, and he's the one that smokes. So Pimp's completely alone. There's the first. Turns back, manages to pick up two. So that's actually pretty well done by him in that position because Michu went down before Innocent could even react. And now Spiro's going to lurk in on toward B. A man down they might be, but they still want to try and take this fight. The problem is that MSL is perfectly positioned to cancel that out and manages to slide back in behind the box before there's a response, but they're going to push aggressively. And as he goes to lob the nade, it's now a two versus two because Innocent and Spiro have each picked up a kill and they've got the platform to plant this. Deep in the site, not in the open to hold it from either checkers or the tunnels, but they're just going to fight this and hold off a retake and potentially not even need to find other, either of those positions as Innocent takes down Kierby. And so far, so good. The intention successful as Spiro just waits and here's the drop now. It's a huge clutch for the T's to take there. MSL had a great position behind the ball. It's got the first kill. And instead of like, he should have, I guess he didn't see the time in that situation. It was like 10 seconds left on the board. He, I understand what he's trying to do by flashing them and slowing them down, but he essentially just created his own death. He should have at least battled and tried to take that kill. The only option they had was to run and kill him there. And even with a flash going off, you can just pre fire that spot pretty easily. So him getting taken down in that key part of the round was uh, where the T's won the round, unfortunately. But Spiro now taking that good spawn, unable to find a terrorist uh, as they cross, but it doesn't matter. Lord finds one, and it's going to be Nika going down, and that's a big scalp to take at this stage in the game. Lord not still aware, though, that he has company coming out from AZ at the white box, but they had the crossfire set. That crossfire's been gone. So X and O one way and the other, it's a trade. And now favorable for Spiro to take down AZ with the op. So that's mid completely open. But if you can't beat him, join him. So Kirby's gonna walk out to the T side of the map. Unfortunately, he couldn't switch into a terrorist uniform and save his own life for it. So the T's actually finding decent picks sometimes. The engineer's a spy. Is this a TF2 thing? Yes. Nice, thanks for that. You're welcome, keep going. At least, at least you get TF2 in every single cast we do. I do? Yeah, you've mentioned it at least two times. I'm, I'm sure that's the first time I've talked about that game in years. No, you mentioned it yesterday. Anyway, it's going to be another fast pick from Spiro. And uh, as he makes his way into the middle, gets smoked out again. But the pick again, Michu just getting that mid control very fast. Takes down Pimp. Obviously, they are going to be in a force by this round, going into round number 15. But they should be able to close this one out. As long as they don't do anything silly again, like facing by themselves, having no teammates with them. Again, that's Michu almost made that same mistake there, but just holding this mid control now, waiting for to see what the CTs do and how they react. That's all you need to do, and then bide your time and go together somewhere. This one was spotted. Easy nailing that shot with the pistol makes problems occur. Although they can't recover the rifle, that was what I was more looking forward to. If there was going to be a play for Dignitas to pick up yet another eco because Spiro's there to make sure Easy pays the price in no man's land, but bomb goes down. It's not enough. It is eight to seven. Good comeback from. D and G, because remember, this was 7-2 at one point. Was it 7-2? It was 7-2. Yeah. They somehow, they kept stringing two together, two together, two together, and they was playing off the CT economy. Their picks were great, actually. They, their mid-control, especially. They should have been doing that 15 rounds in a row. They've seen they got a lot of picks. AZ getting taken down a lot more than he should, I felt. He was over-facing, getting orped, opening the round up for the T's, and that's where it kind of fell apart from them. And we can see some of the highlights here from the first half, and the, this is what the retake from the CT side this was really strong play from them msl seem to have a lot of clips in this section but we're going to this pistol round now we did see dng rushing beast straight up last time we got shut down by pimp it seems like dignitas are actually going to be boosting in middle getting that fast mid control and seeing what they can do with it showing a lot of presence here up to highway az gonna push forward now turn to his left to hold off rotations as the rest of his team pours out a man and into the bomb site. Ooh. But it's going to be a nice shot on the re-entry from Carr on Innocent. That knocks Pimp off and AZ's already fallen from the same position. Innocent's going to do the exact same punishment to Nico. You shall not mess with Innocent right now because he is far from it. But unfortunately, he's also far from the bomb site. It doesn't even matter. Spiro's going to get the kill. So Innocent doesn't have to rejoin and re-engage in the battle with 8 HP. No kit. It's lots of time. It's going to be DNG tying it on 8 with momentum to string something together. Yeah, interesting round from Digging Puzzle there. They got the bomb down. I'm not sure what their play is going to be here. The, most teams will get Tech 9's armor here. Oh, this is the, the, the back step, right? Does he pick up two frags here? One, Boom. two, good night. Thank you very much. Easy round. And uh, this will be interesting. Will they be going for the AKs next round and play the percentage game? Or will they force and get... 
the Tech Nines and Armour. It looks like they were playing a safer game. So there is one Tech Nine on the board and a smoke and a flash. That normally suggests the teams will be doing one smoke on the A-bomb side, pop flashing out, and trying to get one more bomb down. And he's using the P90. The stock is praying. It's probably not a bad choice to use that gun in that position right now, given the situation that they are stuck with it with the four rifles they've got, two of which is our Famas, as we can see. But the situation's even more dire for Dignitas. No surprise whatsoever. Not actually opting to go towards uh, the A site. AZ does take down Maniz there, so a great start. They haven't even force bought this, so this is looking good already. It is not bad, though, that the trades come out. So no armor, no nades. Lots of time still. As me choose watching middle just to make sure they won't split, but that does indicate at this point in time that they're going to be rushing one site or the other. Lord's gone passive on A. If they had someone at A main, they could be more prepared for this on B, but either way, there is a crossfire set. That's wow. now fallen as MSL managed to pull it back. I thought for certainly for sure they had that. And it's Lord to come back over. He drops down, needs to hit the shot, does on Pimp, and the second one's low enough on MSL. But that's two bomb plants now in a row. And getting three kills as well, that's a very important factor in this round because going to the next one, although they've got two Famuses left, they're not going to have a whole bunch of cash to handle this very strong buy that'll be coming in. That's two bombs going around in two rounds. Some decent frags made every single time as well. So they're going to be having, in the region, about $5,000, I think it is, maybe five fifty-five hundred 500 for some of them. And uh, they potentially completely shut down the CTs here. If you look over the CT camp, They've got an average, what, 3,500 with two guns saved, but definitely the T's have played a percentage game here and a perfect round for them getting the bomb down and a few kills as well. So now they're looking very strong. Look at their buy they've got. They've got Molotov, smoke grenades, flashbangs, CTs. Relatively good buy for them, but this should be a T round locked up as long as they approach it correctly. I wouldn't like to see a full-on set piece and maybe just do what DNG were doing, work middle, try and get some presence there, push the CTs back and then see what you can do to access them out. The T's are going to span out. Look for picks. They're actually going to go for the boost up if they can find the first shot onto Maniz, who's on top of the hut right now, so very open. Okay, good. He's gone and thought better of it. It would be a chance to open the floodgates, drop down through. Shapiro's inside B. But he's not inside the vent. Maniz has gone over to join, so they have two on B, one on mid, and here it goes. The first flash out. No wall of smoke. That allows Innocent to spill, still spot up MSL. Maniz, he's in that cubby. Meanwhile, over at B, it's Spiro to find the kill on Kirby. Not checking the corner when he comes around, but AZ pushes out eventually. He can't stay in the corner forever. And that means that they do get the kill, and Nico's going to add to that. So mid is now completely open. Smoke on top of Z Connector as well, so it's not quite so probable they'll be able to retake. And Nico's got that bomb. All three players remaining right now from the T's stuck inside middle, but fanned out in very thin defense. They'll make their presence known on A as AZ's gonna find another. It's been Ease that has to do the job, managing to do damage on the first and taking down AZ, but Nico's come right back into it. It looked like for a second as the player climbed the ladder, he'd have a real chance against Pimp, who now has to watch from exactly where Spiro's gonna come from at car. He's not peeking it just yet, but he'll have the knowledge, and it'll just be a matter of time as that flash does go into Spiro. The nade's gonna put him down very low, not enough, but it's going to be in the other direction. The nade is more effective. Oh. An excellent response, but 6 HP. Just barely dodging from 8 to 6 on that one. It does come around, and it's looking the wrong way. Nico almost getting caught off guard. It's Dignitas that was so tense. responding back. And remember, that was an early buy, so look how broke they still are. Kierby's got 1,236 for Pimp. Wow, I really favored the T's going into that, but the first two frags going in favor of DNG, and then AZ having to go huge, and they worked together, and they stuck as a unit, and got frag for frag going into the bomb side. but wow, what a tense last uh, situation that was. Both, both players very low, and it wasn't even looking at the CT. Turned around and managed to land one bullet, and they uh, secured the round, but great attempt from the CTs, but ultimately that pushes them onto Eco now. You can see they can't really commit too much to this. A few PT-50s in their hands, but they're not even stacking, really. Three players towards A, Terrorist playing this correctly, just making sure they don't give too much away. One player towards that toxic area, that's going to be KRB. He may get some confrontation now, sorts a couple of players. They just need to get a little bit more information, take one kill perhaps, and then choose up where to go and uh, opt in. So you see mid control game by AZ. That's positional advantage gained, and then the rest of the team can join him now and they can choose a bomb site. Well, looks like bomb site B, without a doubt, is going to be that choice. 
as Kirby continues to push forward. They need to be weary of the fact, okay, so he's going to line up the Molotov toward Generator, but they need to be weary of the fact that Maniz is in that corner very well entered by MSL. Close position from Spiro catching them off, though, and now gives Lord a chance to play exactly the hand of God from heaven, but it isn't godly enough. It's only the one kill with the USP, and that gives Dignitas now round number 10 and money back in their favor. So DNG needs to work out what they're going to do. Money isn't great. Double eco looking likely. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Five, seven CZs. Definitely the right choice. I think a lot of teams would have forced all that situation, got the Famuses out, but it would have pushed them in such a spiral of a deficit had they have done that. So I think this is very wise from them. It's very disciplined as well. It's difficult to swallow this sort of eco when you're going in and you're down on the CT side, but they are just going to reply. And they may have a chance of getting some frags here. They do have a lot of players in the middle, but MSL opens it up, takes down two of his own. Maniz will finish him off, but the advantage is gained. The positional control has been gathered, but look at Michu, backstabbing. They don't know he's there. He can find two kills here. Needs to be efficient about it. AK comes right down to his hand, so thanks for the gun. But unfortunately, in grabbing it, he takes a little bit too much time to turn his back to where the enemy was coming from, from mid-garage. It leaves us now with twos aside, but Maniz on 14 is not anywhere near this A-bomb site. In fact, Spears even further. Maniz has gotten at least to the ticket booth on highway. But with the smoke in front of him, still can't do anything about the fact that Pimp has made it to quad. And that proves to be very detrimental for the efforts right now of Dorby, Dobby, Dobry. I'm going to get it right eventually. And it is Spiro that's got Pimp brought back to a one-on-one -on -one as he goes for the flank, but it gives Kirby the read on exactly where he's coming from. And Kirby just has to play this out correctly from quad. Looks for the initial peak, but overextends a little bit too much. So Spiro in a one-on-two -on -two able to pull this back to an even draw of 10-10. Yep, and even without a kit, it's going to be pretty comfortable for him. But as you said, that is a massive round, and it was kind of convincing for DNG there. Like the mid control was gained, but they came back with a flurry of kills. And that last one, two on two situation, you had to favor the T's. They weren't really playing off each other there. Crossfire wasn't engaged, two one on one situations. And uh, unfortunately, that does go in the favor of DNG, and that's a round they needed as well. They actually opted out of uh, buying up that round, so their economies would be great. They weren't even expected to win that one, but Dignitas now looking a little bit weaker. Two Tech Nines and a three AKs. This definitely does suggest you're going to do a full set piece when you have this kind of buy. You definitely don't want to try and work picks. You haven't got the, the men to do that. You want to swarm up on site when you've uh, completely locked it down with smoke and flashbangs. A site looking rather vacant from that perspective, but clearly... On the perimeter, just out of our peripheral, there is two CTs waiting. Lord and Michu, and Michu gets caught out underneath the catwalk. This puts more pressure on Lord and the rotation that's coming out from Innocent. He's only able to pick up one. So Lord continues to dance. We'll see if the feet can continue to buy him space. It only finds one kill, but it does allow Maniz to get back on top of that highway. So once they push beyond, they get caught out for it. It's left to Pimp, and poor old Pimp has only one HP. And it doesn't even matter because the AWP hits him. He could have had all he wanted. Up to 100, of course, because if you could choose, I'm sure you'd take like 4,000. Well, that was actually a really impressive retake from DNG, right? So that execution, you normally do favor the T's on. It's very strong. It's done properly. They managed to find an opening kill. They get the bomb down, but Sphero, that really impressive warp shot, this is the one. Look at this. Uh, flick of the wrist and takes it up. And that's the retake completed at that stage. Pim was the last man. He got taken down as well. Straight in the chest. And there we go. And it's going to pit... Dignitas now in a horrible position. That's a, a second force by from coming up. I guess they've lost quite a few in a row now, so they can justify the bits of armor. But all players heading towards A again, maybe something a bit faster here. As uh, probably there's a pop flash coming in. And then through they go and see what they can find. They'll meet you in a great position. It's counter flash though, so before he can continue spraying forward, Lord has to fall back off of it. He's the only one that pays the price because they hunt onto him. They had eyes locked, but no one else was spotted even before they all dro dropped down. So. D&G now with two rounds up on Dignitas. You've got to favor You them. said Dust2 was the anomaly. I said Cash. So it was going to be close in these first two maps. It was actually perhaps surprising that Dust2 was as convincing as it was. So Spiro there, 22 frags, 20 on Innocent. MSL leading the charge with Dignitas. He's got 24 kills of his own. Um, but yeah, this is obviously a very important round now. Dignitas can find himself in a horrible situation. They lose this one. But look at CT set up, going aggressive on B, gaining that information. It's going to be Manise as well. This kill is huge. But it's traded. So you say information, they get it back, but overextending, not knowing Spiro's there with the op, does give the favor firmly back to DNG on this gun round. Remember that gun round, because 
Things are not looking good for the next one if Dignitas can't even get a bomb plant out of this. So that should be the ultimate goal at this point in time. And to do so, they'll take the bomb into A main where Lord waits above on the catwalk. And may just have the angle as he realizes that MSL's put himself in the corner. And Michu's done the rest of the work. So it is 13 plus a lot of money in their favor. Dignitas have to eco this one. They have to. Tech 9 out already for at least one. Deagle. They need, they, need, they need orps. They need to start working the picks themselves. Getting themselves in a world of pain right now. This is a full force eco because eco, they've gone... Well, full, they, they, full force pistol, excuse me, rather, because they've gone with armor and utilities on it. Well, next round, they're a maximum loss bonus anyway. So they can justify this. I think they've kept around 1,500, 1,800 each. So they will have enough to do a decent AK buy next round. It won't be enough for an AWP. Yeah, that's the, that's, well, that's to allude to the point you were making, they need to get a bomb plant now. Yeah. We'll see if they can work that out. Lord's moving forward. We've seen him play at quad quite successfully. The difference is this time they've got Molotovs, so they can actually flush out the CTs a little bit more effectively. And there they go in. I mean, they've been hitting A. This is the third round in a row, so Michu and Lord need to find an adjustment. We saw Lord try and get forward. Michu, this is smart, though. Over top works perfectly. It gives now two. And now Dignitas, it's Nico. That gets back into Mihu. But Lord's trying to retake now from Highway. Similar result on the entry that Dignitas get close enough, but look where the bomb ended up thrown. It got tossed up on top of the crate. So the entry, the entry that time was actually slowed by me, Michu, but Dignitas have come closer than that to getting bombs down in the last two. And like we said, and you said, it's going to be an AK buy as a result of not getting that plant. Yep, but it's a decent AK buy, full utility for them. But the CTs again in such a strong position here. They can do similar stuff to what they didn't be before. Get the AWP in, have one person pushing. That push went incredibly well for them. I don't see why they won't do that again. And look, look, look at this regression into B again. But even one player waiting for them. The exchange is made, but the CTs is locking down that push. And they at least got some decent information there as to what was there. There's only one player. The, the T's, meanwhile, know that two people were committed to that push. So they should have taken the opportunity to at least scout out an A. They don't because the smoke holds off Nico. And there's really not an opening because Pimp wasn't even close enough to Squeaky to take a look toward Catwalk. As okay. the flashes will bounce once more. A looks to be the name of the game. But this time, Michu's not at quad. He's... In fact, just coming back up highway, but it's going to be Spiro with the op to compensate for that, allowing Lord to do what he does best, and that's kill everyone that comes near the bomb plant radius. So again, the bomb goes down inside the site, and Dignitas, although Pimp can see it, it's within grasp, it's not necessarily safe to do so, and it becomes even more dangerous as AZ gets out of the picture, and he can't even find Michu, although trying, put him down to 46. This is looking very convincing. DNG now match point with a very good succession of rounds. Yeah, very convincing indeed. Match point on the CT side with five to go. Obviously a position where Dignitas have to buy now, but it looks like from the way the CTs are holding the bomb sites, it's a foregone conclusion. Like, they're just waiting to win this now. That B push they're doing, the, the, the T don't have a response. So I'd say they probably go hard into B, try and lock that down as they're doing the pushes. And you can see actually sending a few men over there this time. So actually trying to lock down the CT push that's been coming almost every single round. It's going to be Maniz doing it once again, not showing as much aggression this time. He's got Sphero with the AWP, kind of basing him in. This could be perfect, though. If the T's commit to this and try to isolate him, it's going to be MSL being the point man here. Oh, Maniz is going to get impatient. I thought he was going to look. Uh, I think he's got told off. Uh, yeah. Don't push. Well, he's still standing in a really awkward situation, but they don't even look at him, so he pops out. Thanks for the bomb, boys, and now got two kills to go with it. Michu's going to find Pimp, and it's left to just... The lonely ghost, the shadow we see through the smoke. That shadow apparently carries with it some cold fear because it's instilled that upon Manise in the form of the AK-47. It leaves Kirby with a rotation point back through middle, but again, Bomb is firmly in the control of D and G. Yeah, what a perfect last round that was. Like I said, Sphero probably told Manise that, do not push, we can do this, this is the perfect lockdown. And it's going to be the last man remaining. KRB does get taken down by Sphero. The hero of that round, I would say. And yeah, very convincing stuff from uh, DNG as they bounce straight back. And this CT half was pretty stellar. I think that was uh, eight in the row towards the end, but very, very strong stuff for them. Only two rounds taken for Dignitas on their T side. And yeah, that's put a spanner in the works for this campaign. For Dignitas after yeah. this oh, I, to be fair, I think this one on, on the, the stats was 50-50 between the two of them. So our graph could be, could have been useful in that sense and we knew one of the first two maps we both kind of agreed that it might be four if i thought i did think it, that it was going to be cash but you thought more dust too either way 
I think Dignitas are still in an okay position for this series. Yeah, it's only 1-1. It's just being, things have been reset. So Exactly. And we moved to Mirage. Now, that said, we did go to Mirage where D&G last night against Peter were pretty damn solid. Mm. And they are Peter would fairly have, good. Peter were bad, in my opinion. That's I true, think, too. I think that was the, the, the main factor. Dignitas, Mirage is famously one of their best maps. So if uh, DNG argued on this, this would be a proper test for them. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. Either way, Spiro leads the way that time, 28. That's the highest kill total out of the two games that we've seen. And a closer look will indicate that not only that, he had first five, uh, five first kills, no assists. So he finished everything, no helping his teammates. They had a really good CT half. They moved him around very cleverly. And this exploiting that B zone towards the end was so hard for the T's to even react to. That last round was perfect. Manise hiding in there behind the box while he baited them in, got the first kill. And Manise took down two. Big sprays as well. Very impressive stuff. So, DNG bouncing back into this series. Potentially, we didn't see this coming, but at least we have a game on our hands for this final. Fitting for a final. We do have a game on our hands. We'll take the break as per always, and we'll be back on Mirage to see who's going to jump ahead. This first guy has to jump. He has to make the CT miss that first headshot. The fact that you just run straight in like that, he doesn't have to move his crosshair at all, and he's just shot and dink. I think this would probably be an example of that. Look at that instant kill. Like, that's that's the problem. Failed Molotov by the looks of things as well. Had to make the way off the bomb side. But in they go, and it's still MSL that waits. And he finds him. One, eight, and actually, that's where it kind of fell apart from him. And we can see some of the highlights here from the first half. And uh, this is what the retaking the CT side. This is really strong play from them. MSL seem to have a lot of clips in this section, but we go into this pistol round now. They could be more prepared for this on B, but either way, there is a crossfire set. That's now falls down, needs to hit the shot, does on pimp, and the second one's low enough on MSL, but that's two bomb points. Look at this, uh, flick of the wrist, takes it up, and that's the retake completed that stage. Pimp is the last man, he got taken down as well. Straight from the chest, and there we go. 